Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India discuss uh, about the leadership right and uh, as our subject is leadership and team effectiveness uh, so uh, some part of the team effective how to lead the team uh, that we have discussed in our earlier sessions but uh, now we will talking about uh, uh, this particular uh, aspect uh, that is the how uh, our uh, uh, team is to be constituted and what is the relationship between the leadership and the team effectiveness is there uh, we have to also understand first what is the difference between the uh, group and team, right. So, therefore, when we talk about the groups, the characteristics and the functions of group, the groups found in organization, uh, why do people join group, uh, team and then this will be about the group, right. And then we will talk about the team, because uh, we are talking about the conversion of the group into team is there. So, then team in its characteristics, uh, common barriers faced by the high performance work teams, uh, then the group versus team, what makes the teams uh, effective, uh, the case study, uh, research paper, book recommendation and the references as usual is there. So, whenever we are talking about the group, there are two or more individuals interacting and interdependent are there, right. So, therefore, uh, they, that is the requirement is that there are two two or more individuals are there, right. So, you know, at least uh, for a group uh, two persons are required and um, that is the, they are interacting with each other eh? and the interdependent, they are dependent on each other, right. And for, for what? For to achieve particular objective or goal, to achieve a particular common goal. Both are having a common goal that is a particular objective are there. So, group can be defined as a collection of the individuals who have regular contact and the frequent interaction, mutual influence, the common feeling of the camaraderie and the who work together to achieve a common set of goals is there. And the group behavior can be stated as a course of action a group takes as a family is there. And therefore, in that case uh, it will be always uh, that is the uh, it is just like a family. Right. So, in the family they, uh, there are the naturally uh, there are more than one minimum two members are there right and they are interacting and in interdependent are there and as a result of which in the organization also we find that is the, this type of this uh, the group uh, interaction is there uh, and uh, uh, they, they are for the common objective, they are working together and they are uh, interdependent on the each other is there. So, definitions of the groups are the that is the Wendell French has given a group is a number of persons usually reporting to a common superior and having some face to face interaction who have some degree of uh, interdependence in carrying out tasks for the purpose of achieving the organizational goals are there. So, uh, uh, here it is another important point they are reporting to a common superior. And therefore, in that case, uh, this is becoming an additional characteristics of a group. So, the, some face to face interaction is there, who has some degree of interdependence, which we have already mentioned earlier, hmm, by the purpose of achieving the organizational goals. Now, J. S. Gibbard, J. J. Hartman and D. D. Mann has given this definition, two or more persons who are interacting with one another in such a manner that each person influences and is influenced by the each other person is there. So, this is also uh, somewhat related to uh, our leadership al hmm, where the two persons are there, hmm, they are interacting with each other or more than two persons means and influence is there. And in the definition of this uh, leadership, we have talked about that is what is the leadership? Leadership is to influence the other and uh, here in these group members also they are influencing each other. Jablon uh, and the Forsyth has given the another definition 
two or more individuals who are connected to one another by the social relations. Right. So, therefore, in that case uh, this has been explained as a part of this uh, social relation is there, but in every definition we will find that the common is that is uh, at least two or more members are there, they are going for the achieving the common uh, uh, goal right? and uh, they are influencing each other this is a characteristic here and uh, uh, they, 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 are, uh, they are working together for uh, face to face interaction may be right or for that particular task for which they are interdependent is there. So, the, what, what is the size? So, to form a group it must be having at least 2 members, but uh, practically the number of group members ranges from 15 to 20 and the more the numbers in the members in the group the more complex it is to manage is there right. And uh, however, if um, I remember that is in the uh, the book uh, when we are talking uh, Kuhn's book management book it is written that is with one superior there should be 4 to 5, uh, 5, 5 to 7. Uh, that uh, subordinate should be there means that is a one group right. So, in one group uh, not too many they, however, it is mentioned in this book uh, has been specially mentioned uh, about the 15 to 20, but uh, in, uh, in a, uh, as far as the reporting is concerned then what should be the size of the group as far as the reporting is concerned then uh, in that case uh, that has to be from 15 uh, 5 to 7. Every group has a certain goals and there are the reasons for its existence is there. So, there is a common goal is there and they are working for that. The norms a group has certain rules for interacting with the group members right. The structure it has a structure based on the roles and positions held by the members right. So, therefore, in that case uh, uh, there will be certain rules and regulation norms will be there for a particular group there will be particular norms will be there. The structure is there it has a structure based on the roles and positions held by the members right. So, therefore, that, that is uh, also we have to see that is uh, what organizational structure is there. Roles are every member of a group has a certain roles and responsibilities. Hmm? So, therefore, in that case uh, the every member uh, has uh, stick to a particular role which he has to perform hmm? and which are assigned by the group leader is there. Interaction between the group members can occur in several ways that is face to face telephonic in writing or in any other manner is there and then that, that, that is about the online. Nowadays we can say that the interaction is on the online use of technology. Hmm. So, therefore, it can be the face to face or by the use of technology right or in the writing or in the any other manner is there which will be uh, the, the where the interaction will be there uh, because they are interdependent. That is a collective identity like for example, you are saying finance department, marketing department, HR department, IT department, system department. So, therefore, it is an aggregation of the individuals which are separately called as members and collectively called as a group is there. So, here it will be very very important. So, that is whenever we are talking about the collective identity right, then they all are representing and then you please also understand group performance. So, group performance because of the collective identity group performance will be also measured and whenever there is a group performance is measured individual performance will be measured that is fine, but the group performance will be also measured and especially in the uh, type nature of these uh, project based organizations right. So, therefore, in that case this project based organizations they where the project team is there. Hmm? Uh, and then they are working front together. So, this will be called as the members and collective called as a group is there. Some functions include the following working on a complex and independent task that is too complex for an individual to perform and that cannot be easily broken down into independent task is there and therefore, in that case what they do they divide this task into the different members. Generating new ideas or creative solutions to solve problems and that require inputs from several people. I have mentioned about the skills of the managerial skills, leadership skills. So, therefore, technical skills, human skills, conceptual skills and analytical skills and designing skills is there. So, that is about the uh, technical skill means job knowledge is there, huh? human skills interpersonal relationship is there, conceptual skills about the knowledge of that particular con concept about that particular knowledge uh, in, in depth. 
then designing skill is there that is the creativity skill is there which you are designing is there right. So, therefore, when you are talking about the um, uh, these uh, skills are there and then this, this is creating the creative solutions to the to solve the problems. I, I with my experience uh, what I learn is that is the every problem is having the solution. But the problem is this that is we do not accept the solution that is why the problem remains problem. Hmm? Suppose the, uh, the problem is that is somebody has hurt us and what is the solution? Solution is this that is the in a given situation suppose we have to forgive that particular person, but we will not forgive that person. We will fight with have the conflict with that particular person and we will not forget. Uh, similarly, um, and there will be the solution to forget it, ignore it, but those the solutions will not be acceptable right. Uh, for some people it is acceptable, some people it is not acceptable. So, but uh, then generating the new ideas are the creative solutions right, that require the inputs from the several people. Serving liaison or coordinating functions among the several work groups whose work is to some extent in, uh, independent that is the licensing and coordinating, facilitating the implementation of the complex decision. So, therefore, any complex decision is there with the help of this your group right, then you are able to uh, solve that problem and uh, accomplishment of that particular target. Serving as a vehicle for training new employees, groups teach new members methods of operations and the group norms are there. There are four types of the groups are there. One is the formal group and this group is identified by the organization structure and after planning, organizing group the activities and put those under a formal structure deciding their goals and objectives and strategies to achieve the same. The formal group members report to their superiors and interact with each other to achieve the common goals are there. So, that is a formal uh, group is there and everybody knows about that that is the how these uh, um, formal groups are working into the organization. Second is command group. This group is also known as the task group. A task is defined as the cross functional activities carried out by a group of members to accomplish a common goal. A team represents the nature of a command group. A command group can be formed by drawing members from various formal groups are there. Third type of the groups is that it is a committees. To achieve the results organizations often form the permanent or temporary committees and drawing members from various formal groups. Committees also represent the presence of cross functional members and while for a command group goals may be specific for the committees it is varied. Informal groups are, are formed within a formal organizational structure. Informal group members primarily meet the social or affiliation needs sharing their common interest. Thus, informal groups are not organizationally determined. The members themselves from such groups to fulfill their need for social interaction is there. So, we have started with the formal groups right and then we have ended with the informal groups are there. So, therefore, in that case whether you are having the formal or informal groups are there, they, they, it has to be decided that is the what is the purpose for which uh, this group has been formed and then once it is formed uh, and then the, the organization will be making them support maybe the legally or, or the, uh, the uh, informally will be the support will be there. Now, question arises why people join the group. Hmm? So, security mirrors strength in numbers. So, therefore, in that case this is a status a pinpoints a prestige that comes from the belonging to a specific group. Inclusion is in a group is considered as important because it provides the recognition and status. Self esteem transmits uh, feelings of the self worth is there. Membership can sometimes raise feelings of self esteem like being accepted into a highly valued group is there and therefore, in that case what happens? They are the intellectual people and they form their own group. So, that is a self esteem transmit people's feeling of self worth is there ok. I am I belong to that particular group which is the um, group of the highly intellectual uh, members. Affiliation with groups can meet one's social needs also. So, work groups significantly contribute to meet the need for friendships and the social relations are there. So, therefore, in that case uh, it will be always uh, uh, there will be the need to meet the uh, for their friendships and the social relations are there and therefore, in that case um, uh, that may be based on their, their social background is there. So, this is group can meet the social needs are there. Group represent the power. 
So, what mostly cannot be achieved individually becomes possible with the group effort and power might be aimed to protect themselves from unreasonable demands and the informal groups provide options for the individuals to practice the power is there and therefore, in that case whenever we are having the informal groups, so then the options will be provided for the practicing the power. The people may join a group for goal achievement, sometimes it takes more than the one person to accomplish a particular task and therefore, a group has been formed. Now, whenever we are talking about the conversion of the group into team. Now, a group whose individual efforts result in performance that is greater than the sum of the individual inputs are there. And uh, here I would like to mention that is the uh, when we are talking about the uh, diagrammatically, whenever we are talking about the group, now this is the group right, these are the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 people. So, these are 6 employees they are working together they are connected with each other right, but as an official or formal group they are dependent that is the interdependency is there among this group, but there is no synergy. When I say that is these are the this is the group of the persons those who are working right, but here they are connected with each other. So, it is not only that is the they are formally interdependent, but they are informally also interdependent on the each other. Then this synergy that we will say that is uh, this group is converted into team. Whenever this group has to convert into the two, uh, team, then it is for the for what purpose? It is for the performance. Always whenever they are working together as a team, their total output will be much more than the group is there. In any organization, whenever the groups are converted into a team, the managerial effectiveness, the productivity, organizational effectiveness and that will be the sum of the individual inputs will be much more and that is why you see ESOP is there, employee share on profit is there. Those who are working uh, in the projects and they are working as a team, you find that is a that uh, project team is getting much more than the uh, another project team. Why? Because that another project team could not connect and that remain only as a group. So, a team becomes more than just a collection of people. So, a strong sense of the mutual commitment right that value system that is creates the synergy as I mentioned about the synergy in diagram also. So, thus generating the performance greater than the sum of the performance of the individual members. A team is a group of people who collaborate a related task towards a common goal. Now, this is also to be understood that is this interdependency is for what one is one uh, very important is for the organizational accomplishment of goal. Now, these, uh, this particular concept has been defined by the many scholars in their own uh, perspective and then the, uh, they like here these uh, Kensberg has de defined the team as a small group of people. Now, mm, mm, uh, uh, with the period of time these definitions are uh, changed and different people are given the different definitions. So, need not to confuse because when I say the small group of people, small group. Now, what is a small? 10 is small, 20 is small, 100 is small, 1000 is small. So, therefore, in that case this is in the context of with complementary skills committed to a common purpose. Now, that common purpose if we are talking about the overall organization multinational company, so then this small group will be the much larger group will be there. But when we talk about the a section of that multinational company, then it will be a small group will be there. So, again it is a common purpose and specific performance goal, once the goal has been achieved then that, uh, that particular team will be stop functioning. Now, the another scientist that is Moran and the Griffin, they have given the a small number of people with complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose, common performance goals and approach for the which they hold themselves mutually accountable. Now, this, this point is the additional point is compared to the other definitions which we have discussed. There is a mutual accountable is there. So, one cannot say that is he has done not me, no you are a member of a team. So, then we have done whether it is a success or it is a failure. So, the Dyer has given the another definition, it is a work group that must rely. Now, here there is he is not talking about the size, here he is talking about the small group, this is talking about the small number. It is a that must rely on collaboration if each other to experience the optimum success and achievement is there. Dear friend, this is the uh, real crux of the working together is there. So, why we are working together, hmm? why we are interdependent on each other. So, our personal goal and the organizational goal both goals are to be achieved and that is the optimum success. I alone cannot do anything, 
unless and until I do not get, get the my team members, not the group members, team members. When I get my team members, I will be able to do that. So, what is the characteristics of a team? So, common goal, it is like a group, the team spirit, this, this is making these characteristics is very, very important dear friends. The enthusiasm of the members to reach out the team goal is always high. Hmm? So, working together right and therefore, whenever we see the any game especially when you see the hockey or you see the football right and the way they, they are playing and that, sh that shows or you cricket. Uh, so, therefore, then in that case you will find that is the, the, the enthusiasm of the members right to reach out the team goal that you can see in the in the field it is very obvious whether there is a team spirit or not. So, there might be the captain and the players, but if there is no team spirit you can see they are not working uh, with the coordination with each other, but when they work with the coordination that also you can see whether you win or lose that is a different issue, but the team spirit will be visible. The trust another very very important dimension in a team and they, and they have the trust to each other and what is our subject to uh, this subject is leadership and team effectiveness. Here is the role of the leadership is there and you understood that is the leader what leader does leader provides the direction. A clear cut direction instruction what to do, what not to do, what will work, what will not work that clear cut direction that clear leadership that will be creating a team and the selected team leaders heads the activities is there and therefore, this to be a successful leader. So, what we understand clear direction required by the leader is there. Now, here it is a characteristics of a team in which we are talking about the uh, two parameters I would like to take in this particular picture that is one is the collaboration which I have talked about. So, they are working this, this has been given in the in terms of the team spirit whenever we are talking about is there right. And there it is the defined roles, roles that has to be very clear, who will do this job? So, anybody will do the job, so nobody does the job and somebody will talk about this right. So, in spite of this that is the everybody does the job, who is clear about the job, he is doing his job. So, therefore, in that case there is a defined roles are becoming very, very important. Mutual accountability is there, so nobody can escape from the responsibility right equally responsible for the underperformance and failure of the team interdependency which is the condition for the, the team defined roles are there it has been allocated specific roles and the streamlined direction is there that is a leader's role is there who shows the way to the members and motions of their operations are there that synergy and collaboration which already i have explained now but it is not that easy dear friends because there are certain barriers those common barriers faced by the high performance work team, then why people are not working in the team because there are certain reasons, those reasons are called the barriers. What is the, what are the very barriers are there? Non participating leadership, now some people are the positional leader, but their team members fail to use a democratic leadership style, they are not connecting with the people, the followers or the group or team members and therefore, the leader is there but not involved. So, that will be the non participating leadership is there and they are only positional leader by the organizations. Poor decision making, so naturally the team members are interdependent, they are dependent on the leader, the leader has to take the decisions, then only there will be the any act will be done, but no poor decision making, he is looking towards his superior, he is looking to his superior and nobody is uh, taking a decision. So, team members make decisions too quickly without a blend of rational and intuitive decision making methods are there. So, if there is a team is there, so that leader will be having the directional leadership and when there will be the directional leadership, the intuitive decision making will be taken by the team and that will be acceptable. Infrequent communication, lines of communications are closed and the infrequent are there and the therefore, uh, uh, there nobody is clear who is supposed to be known, he is not known right. So, therefore, lack of mutual trust, the team members do not fully trust each other and, uh, and uh, uh, as a team then they are not working as an entity. So, these common barriers they are affecting these performance of the your team. Also, we have to understand that is the how that uh, this diversity uh, when uh, working together and then it is not valued, uh, then how we have to get the work done is there. 
So, inability to manage the conflict is there naturally there are different personalities. So, every personality is different from the other right and then they are and they are working together. So, naturally there will be the conflicts, but the conflicts has to be resolved and if the leader is not able to resolve the conflict, uh, the leg pulling, back biting right this will be the culture. Lack of the goal clarity for what we are working right. So, I remember um, you know, one uh, case study in which the people from pharmaceutical industries employees they were interviewed and asked what is your role in the organization. So, somebody said I am I am the produ I'm production manager, I am the operations manager, but nobody said that is the we are producing the medicine which will be saved, which is the saving the life of the others. So, what is the goal? Goal is not that is the manufacturing something x y z, goal is to um, prepare the x y z for the saving the lives of the others. So, therefore, in that case there will be the lack of commitment and the engagement will be poorly defined roles and responsibilities as I mentioned there is no clear cut, negative atmosphere is there and overall team culture that is not open, transparent, positive and the future focus results in a failure to perform at high levels is there. So, ultimately we will understand the difference between the groups versus team is there. So, that is the uh, a collection of individuals who work together in a complete task, a group of persons having collective identity joined together to accomplish a goal. Leadership is only one leader, more than one is there because their accountability is there, they can take the decisions. So, that is the meaning of the leadership. Members are the independent, it is it is a interdependent, focuses on the accomplishing the individual goals, it is a team goals are there. Work products is individual and that is a collectivism is there. So, ultimately how to create the effective team? So, ideal size and membership is there as I mentioned that is the um, one should be able to control and get work done that should be the ideal size and membership right and that will be decided on the nature of jobs the task which are to be completed. Fairness in the decision making is there and therefore, if you are the fair in decision making uh, then there will be no complaint by the one member against another member. The creativity identifying the solutions the best part of the creativity is what that is the providing the solutions. Accountability is there purpose and goals are there action plans, roles and responsibilities, information sharing, good data, meeting skills and practices, decision making and participation. Then the ground rules are there, clear roles, accepted leadership, effective processes, solid relationships and the excellent communication is there. So, now, here the focus on the four major factors on effective. On the basis of the previous characteristics, finally, we can conclude that there are the four supportive environment. Teamwork is most likely to develop when management builds a supportive environment for it. Creating such an environment involves encouraging members to think like a team, collective thinking, collective wisdom, providing adequate time for meetings. Uh, so, timely meetings and uh, uh, then uh, there is a proper democratic meetings are organized and demonstrating the faith in members capacity to achieve. Second is skills and role clarity is there, team members must be reasonably qualified to perform their jobs and have the desires to cooperate Be beyond these requirements. Members can work together right and therefore, in, in that case they, they know that what is the role, what is my role and what is the role of the others. So, that clarity is there. Superordinate goals are there. So, a major responsibility of managers to keep the team members oriented towards their overall task, right. So, what happens sometimes, unfortunately, in organizations' policies, record keeping requirements and reward system may fragment individual efforts and discourage the teamwork is there. So, that culture of the organization, right, that is the overall goals of the organization that should support the collective efforts and not the individual efforts. Then rewards will be there. So, reward will not be only to the one person, it will be the rewards to the team and therefore, in that case uh, as I was giving the example of the project teams especially and there you will find that whether it is a financial or non-financial is there like the recognition is there, but th they are just such powerful that is a team members they feel pride by doing the work together and therefore, as a administrative purpose they find that is uh, their performance have been recognized is there. 
Uh, here we will find this case study that is the calamities of the consensus, time for groups to reach a decision many, uh, and uh, in details this can, case study you can uh, find out and uh, basically it is about the that is uh, how the team uh, is important for any particular objective is there. Uh, here the uh, this, these questions will be as an assignment to you is consensus a good way for groups to make decisions right uh, now now you see in many organizations what happens the people say you write my uh, dissent right that is and rest of the people are saying okay this decision is okay now the leader is into the soap he is in problem that is uh, now what is to be done. So, is the consensus uh, to develop a consensus that that is uh, is a good practice or not and why or why not. Can you think of a time where a group of which you were part relied on consensus how do you think the decision turned out and then when there is any decision of the consensus is there do you really believe that that, that, that type of the decision making process uh, that is encouraging the team or it does not encourage the team functioning is there. Uh, that a genuine leader is not seeker of the consensus, but a modeler of the consensus is there. So, it is not like that is the he will request or he is seeking that uh, the everybody should give uh, agree for this particular, it is not like this. Rather than the leader puts the things in a, such a way that everybody supports that particular uh, idea. This is about the research paper open uh, creative workspace impacts for the new product development team creativity and effectiveness is there. This paper is the very much uh, uh, relevant to understand that is the how for this new product development the team creativity and effectiveness can be developed. So, this will is the research paper. Um, this is the book recommendation hmm? group dynamics for teams and therefore, in that case you will find in this book that is the it talks about um, the framework for the teaching about teams and improving how teams function hmm? and material offering practical advice on techniques and activities to help improve the teams performance uh, special pedagogical features like the uh, leading virtual teams. Nowadays, we are working on the online and therefore, the teams members are at the different places across the globe and therefore, in that case the virtual teams are there. So, is there any difference between the leading the, uh, the, the physical team and the virtual teams are there and then what are the various are, uh, issues and challenges are there and that you can see by taking this particular by reading this particular book you will be able to understand that is the how uh, this uh, is uh, uh, the book will is helping you to understand to convert the group into team. Now, this book is also having the companion website containing discussion questions, class activities, text banks, powerpoint slides and the multimedia links are for the classroom teaching is there. These are the references which you can use for your further readings and the, the material which has been taken from for this particular text is there. So, I am sure that is this all these references will help you to uh, know and identify what which are the barriers in your making the uh, group into team and if the barriers are there what are the solutions are there and uh, this will help you to create better performance oriented team. Thank you.